Hello everybody, this is Jimmy and welcome back to Jimmy Does Knitting. This is my knit podcast where I talk about a topic that I have and we go from there. I am Jimmy Does Knitting on Ravelry, YouTube, Discord, I don't really know how to use it but I'm there, and Instagram of course. And yeah, feel free to reach out. Um, let's get right into it because finally I'm excited. Um, we are wrapping up this little mini series, so I tend to do like topics for my videos and I have like little mini series or whatever. So this is the four sweaters that I impulsively casted on at the end of March and then this is going to be the last of that theme, although you will continue to see the projects just sort of brought in in different ways. Um, all the timestamps are below if you are more interested in one sweater than the other. And I will be showing three of those sweaters today. The first one was the cost recreation sweater. I've done that in the last video. I showed you that as a finished object and I have a whole project video about recreating that. So there is that. And then the first one is this one. So this is my yarn that I got. I got this yarn, which I really like. It's this Merino Tweedy yarn. I love a Tweed yarn. And it is from the Dragkracht. I got this at a festival called Breidache. And I hemmed and hawed about what I wanted to do with this. And the answer was, this sweater was always going to be the answer. Um, this is a self-drafted pattern. I. I'll tell you all about it because I'm not going to write this up. It was super, super, super simple. So we can go on this journey together. Um, I really like it. As I said in a previous video, I'm thinking maybe my wardrobe is changing a little bit. So like not all, all black, although that's primarily what I wear. But if I wear things with like undyed natural colors, maybe that can also be a part of my wardrobe. I don't know. We're flirting with it. And then if I don't like it, then we can we can go from there. Anyway, the sweater. So the sweater is based off of one of my favorite stitch patterns. No, I'll, I'll get up a little closer for you. Um, this is called the ladder stitch. It's in a lot of like Guernsey's sort of thing. And it's uh, meant to be like the ladders going down to the, the docks um, while I'm up. What I did is a bottom up in the round and then I split for the yoke in the back and then I did the sleeves top down. So for the cast on, I did this cabled cast on, which is not my go-to, but I wanted to do it because I had a two by one rib, which is a little different. And then the Italian tubular cast on doesn't really go well with that. So I did that and I did this super long ribbing. I also did it on the cuffs. I did like four inches, 10 centimeters of ribbing. And then I went into the pattern. And so the stitch repeat was six stitches and it was five five and one five by one rib and then on the eighth row you do a garter row so i thought that the two by one you can see better here the two by one i thought was really nice and i was unclear if you would be able to see the texture or not with the tweediness but i think you can i think it shows really well i really like it so I just did like a, a drop shoulder construction. I really just like I did up. I didn't do sleeve shaping. I didn't do shoulder shaping. The, what I did is a three needle bind off. You can see it here. It's beautiful on the shoulders. And so I did that on the eighth row, just like the garter row, because the three needle bind off with it exposed creates this ridge. And so I thought it would be similar to this. So I thought it was a nice little touch. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. The I wanted it to be a little bit more oversized, but the ribbing kind of went in a little bit more than I thought it would. So when I blocked this thing, I blocked it hard. I made this as big as it would possibly go, and I'm super pleased with it. Rib grows anyway, and it just like really grew. I just stretched this thing. Um, so that's really nice. I, yeah, and then I did the sleeves top down. I just did like boring increases of like a knit two together knit around and then a slip slip knit sort of thing on the thing so there's not really much of an articulation with this um i did a bind off that i saw at roxanne richardson's because i was trying to bind off in like regular bind off where you like knit a stitch pass it over but it was too tight it was always too tight so i made this a little bit stretchier 
I think it's fine. It's not not my favorite bind off because you can see it has this little little curl a little bit, but I think it's fine for the sweater, especially because the cuffs come down a little bit, so it stretches some. So yeah, it's I'm really pleased with this. I keep on wanting to pick off the Tweety bits, which I, I know I should not. Um, so maybe I'm entering a little bit of like handmade color era. I know I look better in non-black. Uh, a couple of you have pointed that out to me. So um, I don't know, we'll see. But this is a fingering weight sweater. It is a super wash yarn. I, it has a little bit more drape than I would like because of that. I enjoy a more rustic yarn. I don't need it to be super soft, uh, you know, so like the micron count can be a little bit whatever, but um, yeah, the, the super wash did make it a bit drapey and I didn't realize that until afterwards. These yarns didn't come with a label. It was just like sold literally from a cart in the stand um, and the, the hanks were there. So the hanks were a little bit more roughed up, which is why I didn't catch that it was super wash. Regardless, um, it's a really like natural sweater. I think it's cool. The the flex of the tweed are spaced out well. It's not like with the hand dyed yarn where sometimes it's a little uneven. I didn't alternate skeins or I didn't do anything about that. For the neck, I did also a two by one rib and I, I got lazy and I followed a neckline shaping like for this part, not the shoulder shaping from a, another pattern that I had. I can make it up myself, but it was just easier to go with something else. And this was sort of my knit, easy knit sort of thing. It was easy enough where I could do it without really concentrating, but it was engaging enough where it wasn't like boring, like stocking that in the round. And I'm quite pleased with the results. I'm going on holiday in a couple of weeks and I plan on bringing this. And yes, I'm very excited. So this is my sort of self done, really easy fingering right drop shoulder sweater from the bottom up. So on to project number three from that video, which is the Mila Poel over. And we have lots to discuss with this. This is a beautiful garment. I'm just gonna show it to you and then we can go from there. This is so nice and I tried this on. I'm hoping this catches on camera and it blows out a little bit. It's an all over cable sweater. And whenever I try it on, I'm like, this is amazing. This is truly amazing. And it's not getting enough love. It's a Sari Nordland pattern. It is the Mila pullover by Sari Nordland. She has a cardigan and she's also at time of recording, like asking for testers for a summer top with it. And I think it's, incredibly beautiful and even like the sorry Nordland girlies are not knitting this and I'm like why why is this not happening this is a popular designer get this pattern knit up part of the reason is it's a lot of work it is a bit of a, a slog like I have to put this down and then I pick it up and like really power through and then I put it down and I pick it up and power through and that's sort of how I've been going with this I think part of the issue is to get gauge, I had to go down a needle size. So it recommends a four millimeter needle, which is a US five, five or six, something like that. And I went down to a 3.75 millimeter and that makes it really tight. And then also when I knit cables in the round, I'm really tight. So it's not like the most pleasant feeling with my hands. And that sort of is, not making me do it as much. And there are also a lot of cables. Um, they're not hard. It's super easy. It's a 12 row repeat over like 12 stitches maybe. It's not hard. You can do it without, I mean, I usually have to check the chart every row, but like once you get going, you don't have to like keep track or anything. So it's pretty easily memorizable, but it is, it's just a lot of knitting. And this is super like thick which I'm not mad about. I love a, a sweater that's like really thick. And I got through the body in about five balls of yarn. Um, but I did, I did some modifications on this. Um, let's talk about the modifications and then we'll go to the yarn. So I knit pretty much the size three, two pattern. Um, I finished off like three balls and then I did the neckline. And the neckline for this is a little bit weird, but when I put it on, 
it's all right. It just has a little bit more of like a V in it and it calls for this super long collar that's folded over. Um, because of my neck shaping, I prefer just like an old school, like straight neck collar with like a, a bind off. So I did like one and a quarter of the um, ribbing and then I just did an Italian bind off, which I think looks really good, especially in this yarn. And then um, for the base, I added, I think like six inches onto the length of this thing. And then I modified and did a two inch rib instead of the called for one and a half inch rib, just cause I like a little bit of a longer rib and I got stuck like on the third ball of this thing. And I was just like, this needs to end. So, I mean, I was gonna do two an inch rib anyway, but like the fact that there was a little bit more ribbing than called for also helped. But I mean, I also, I made it so much longer than the pattern cause this is size for women. But I did check the armhole depth and I'm gonna keep the armhole depth and I'm really going for, with the sleeves, I've just started one. It's going a lot faster than the body, which is quite nice, but still the sleeves are growing slowly. Um, so I've started one sleeve and it's more enjoyable to knit, I think, on um, like the sleeves just because it goes, it goes faster. You feel like you're making more progress. And I kept the decrease rate the same, even though my row gauge was different. And I know that I'm gonna knit it longer, but I didn't wanna do the math for like, if I decrease every eighth row instead of seventh row, am I going to have, you know, that's gonna be about two inches longer. What is the size of the sleeve? Cause there's not a schematic on there that like it has the sizes, but there's not like a visual schematic. And I didn't, I didn't wanna, I didn't want to bother. So I'm just going to follow the decreases as suggested and then knit it until in pattern until two inches shorter than the cuff. And then I'll knit the, the cuff in two, for two inches in rib, one by one rib. So that's the plan. I always prefer a short circular. So this is my Chiaogu interchangeable set that I bought for the short circulars. They don't really hurt my hands in terms of how I go about that. And it just, it makes it go much faster for me. I enjoy the process so much longer. Um, if you are that type of person and you knit a lot of garments and you hate like magic loop like me, I would suggest going for that. So that's what I have been doing with this. Um, the yarn. The yarn is Mota. I mean, it's just a black yarn. You really can't see a whole lot. It's kind of like plumpy, but it's not like a, uh, like a, I don't know, a cable yarn, I would say. This is related to the ones that she used in her cardigan pattern. She used the merino version, essentially, of this. This is local sheep from actually the city of Mota in Spain. And the version she used was the merino from Spain or whatever. But this yarn is amazing. I really like the company. You can hear me go on about it like one or two episodes ago about um, their ethics, where they source from. This is all sourced, processed, dyed, shipped from one city, not even like one region, but like one city. And I really like just what they're doing over there. This is fantastic yarn. It's a DK technically, but I mean, I don't know if you can see this. It's a bit thicker than it, it's a thick DK. Um, maybe even like a light worsted, I would say. So this does have a little bit more like weight to it, I guess, than I was expecting, but it's wonderful. I will order this again for the correct project. Um, it's not merino soft, so it does have like that knitting for olive, you know how they have that little bit of a dry feeling? It has that and it's not like the same micron count as a merino, but like it, so it has, a, I don't want to use the term rustic because to me that's more of how it's spun rather than like the yarn itself. Um, but it has a little bit more of a, like a, a wool, wool thing, but I, it's soft. And I'm assuming that when I block this, it's going to soften up a lot. It seems like that. I mean, I blocked the swatch, but that's a different story. So this is Mota by Wool Dreamers. It's 230 meters, 252 yards for hundred grams. It's a three ply. It's made from local wool and it's recommended maybe on a 
maybe a, a worsted weight gauge, but like 3.5 to 5.5 millimeter needles, US 7 to 9. So I am knitting it a little bit tighter, I guess. But yeah, I really enjoy this. And this is going to be a beautiful sweater. When it's done, I just have motivation issues with this. I'm hoping that I can like get on the sleeves and do that. Um, I really spent this last weekend and I just like powered through the end of this because I needed the body done. I usually knit like a sweater in like three weeks, not three weeks, like a month. And this one I've had on the needles for forever, but that's because I've had this, which I self-drafted and finished, the cost sweater, which I self-drafted and finished, and a secret project, which I self-drafted, finished, shipped, wrote up, all this sort of thing um, that I did in the meantime. So I need to be a little bit more gentle with myself that in within that time period, which is about like a month and a half now at this point, I um, have done three whole sweaters, um, a pair of mittens, a scarf, and that I'm only just now starting on the sleeve. Like, it's fine. I need to need to calm down. So uh, I'm really looking forward to having this off my needles soon and to have this for, I would say this winter, but I live in the Netherlands. I could wear this in the summer. I'm going to be honest with you. So I will wear this this summer um, without a jacket on like a an evening of a summer's day if we ever get there and I will enjoy it and love it. But I think the process is, as they would say, a little bit of a labor of love. So that is sweater number three. Sweater number four is a little bit of a story. Let me get my things for it and then we'll come back. Sweater number four is a reattempt at something. So this was the first attempt which I have, I have taken out. So this was the Wind Whistles by Le Garçon and it was meant to be with a light fingering weight and then um, an alpaca. So I got a cone of holes, which I have, of the black, and then I got some black-ish um, alpaca from Lana Grossa from a yarn store that was closing. I thought it would be cheap, it was not. <laughs> and I had two different dye lots. And I realized that this, which is like just to the sleeve shaping, of it was one whole ball and I didn't have enough to finish it. And so what I would need to do is order like four more balls, which have been like, I don't know, 60 more euros. And I didn't want to do it because I wasn't like that in love with it. Um, I really want a brioche sweater. One, I've seen them around everywhere. And I think that they're like super cool looking. Like I just need one in my life. And then two, I had finished the Lanark by the Crayabea, which is like half fisherman's rib. It is fisherman's rib, but which is like half brioche. And I love the rhythm and I got really into it. I didn't ever think I would be a brioche girly, but like here we are, I really enjoy it. Um, I really enjoy it and I can, I can't like create with it, but I can read it enough where I can fix my mistakes and, and I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. So. This was taken off the needles and then we we went searching. So my gauge for this was super off. I knit size B2, which I'm going to knit for this next one, which is in my lap. And that was like, I think like a 36 inch chest and I normally wear like a 42. So the, the gauge was, it was super off. Um, I'm expecting this to be considerably bigger than it needs to be. And because of that, this is, a, I think, like a DK-ish pattern. I needed a DK-ish yarn. Um, but because it was big, I went down, to, I decided I want a sport. And I originally was looking for Hillsvog Usk, and I couldn't find it, like a sweater's quantity, um, enough. So I, I went to one of my other favorite Iberian variants is Retrosario Rosa Pumar. And I got this Vovo, is how I'm pronouncing it. It is, it's a really nice yarn. It's super, super nice. It is like their Mondine. If you've ever used that, which is like one of my favorite ones, I've designed in it, I've used a bunch. And, uh, but like a sport weight. And I think Vovo means grandma 
let's see, this is color number 26. It is 20 stitches, 20 to 23 stitches per um, 10 centimeters, four inches, 100% wool, sourced, scoured, milled, and dyed in Portugal, which is always nice. Um, single source, it helps local farmers. Uh, it's non superwash made from 100% Portuguese wool. It's made from the Campancia sheep, a native breed of southern Portugal. So that's what this is. I'm, I just like what they're doing with yarn as a company. It's fairly affordable. Um, what gets me is the shipping. For some reason, this costs like, I don't know, 16 euros to ship from Portugal to the Netherlands, and it took two weeks, which I ordered from them before. I know that it's what happens. I mostly blame Postanel because they suck. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's just part of the process. This is what it goes. It's not like the States where it's Amazon delivery, two days later, you get something. It takes a while, it's slow, um, which is why I think the shipping rates are a little bit ridiculous, but I mean, that's what it costs to get it. So um, it's whatever. I figured out how much yarn I needed for this because the other one, this version, and the original version called for um, a fingering weight with yarn held with it. And this I wanted to do by myself. So the way I did it was I looked up a couple of other DK weight brioche patterns on Ravelry. And I looked at the meterage for the size that I wanted and I basically did that. I did buy a little bit less because I know when I purl, the way I purl uses less yarn. So I made an educated guess and like ordered, I think like a hundred yards left less, which is maybe like a ball or two. How much is that? 143 meters. So like I ordered a ball less than I probably should have. Uh, but I'm thinking that that way I have, I'll still have enough. I, it's, it's all right. So that's how I determined um, the came to the yarn and then determined how many I needed for this. Cause I can't, I brioche is different cause you knit everything twice, right? So I, I had a hard time figuring it out. I think I ordered 18 balls. Don't quote me on that. I don't know how many balls I ordered, but it was the right, I, right number. Um, so that's what's happening with that. And then it came yesterday and I worked on it yesterday evening and a little bit of this morning and it's it's here. It's it's basically at the same point as the other one, maybe maybe a little less. But yeah, it's um it's it's this. And it's just like a beautiful black brioche fabric. Uh, I was concerned about a sport weight yarn being too thin, but I knew that I love their yarns because I've used their Brusca and their Mondine before, and everybody has said some other things about all their yarns. And I, I was like, we're buying this. Like, this could be my go-to sport yarn. And I think it is. I think that the Mondine is maybe my go-to fingering weight. I mean, depending on what I'm doing, but, and then this could be a good go-to sport weight yarn for me and it's accessible, it's fairly affordable for sweaters quantity, and I, I'm, I'm very happy with it thus far. So that's my wind whistles, and the fourth one that I, the fourth of my, my cast on sweaters is, is a recast on. So end of the series. Upcoming, we're going to go into some pride knitting. There's going to be a pride pod pride pod thing where a couple of um podcasters are joining to do stuff to like celebrate pride and go for it so what i'm going to do there is have sort of a lgbt plus series of, of videos where i you know knit on lgbt plus stuff um like by designers or in my way like a really gay outfit <laughs> Like I have some plans. I just want to make some gay shit if I'm going to be honest, um, which is either made up or whatever, but something that the, the homosexuals might want to wear like a slutty top or slutty something else and just have some fun with it. It's not going to be 
rainbows and whatever, but I do want to highlight LGBT members of our community um, and stuff like that. If you have any recommendations, please put them below. But this is made by Les Garçons, which is actually a couple of, uh, of gentlemen. So this will be definitely included in that, and this saga will be carried over through all of that, along with some other plans that I have done. I have also ordered some more wool from Wool Dreamers for a project. I'm not sure that that will be here in time for the video. And then we'll go along with this kind of almost until it's done. Here in Amsterdam, Pride starts first week of August, I wanna say, and there's a festival called Milkshake, which is really cool. And then like Pride is August. So it's not gonna be just a June thing. It's going to be more than that. And we will discuss a bunch of stuff when we get there, but that's for another video and stuff. Anyway, um, sweater knitting. I love it. We're going to continue sweater knitting through the summer. We're going to actually go off the black for a little bit, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Don't call me on that, but we'll see what happens. Regardless, I hope you all are doing wonderful. I hope the weather is better where you are than it is here. I hope you have spring and that your knitting brings you joy. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And I will talk to you later. Bye.